Welcome back to Terra Hill Farm. Today, we ask the question, can a cheap DIY solar system replace our Honda standby generators that we use when the power goes out? Let's find out. We have unreliable power from our power provider. So we installed a transfer switch to make it easy to hook up our Honda generator to power the critical loads in the house whenever the power went out. Typically, the power usually goes out from five minutes to four hours or six hours at most. But probably every three weeks, we have some type of brownout or short-term power outage. So we need to do everything we can to improve our reliability of our power. So the question for today is, can we build a cheap DIY solar power system with battery backup that can do the same thing for us as our Honda generator does working through the transfer switch. And the second question is, can we do it cheaper than we would purchasing one of those all-in-one solar generator systems that are so popular on the market today? These two Honda generators paralleled together put out about 3,200 watts of continuous power. So we need to build a solar power generator system that can put out at least 3,000 watts to our transfer switch to power the 10 critical load circuits in our house. Here's what we built. We got a 3,000 watt solar off-grid power inverter charge controller from Signature Solar. It puts out 3,000 watts. It'll take 5,000 watts of power from solar panels and it will also charge the battery or take AC from the grid to charge the battery, whichever one you need. We combine this with the EG4 Life Power 5.1 kilowatt lithium ion battery, and this will give us about four kilowatts of usable power on a regular basis to power our house through our transfer switch. Total, I purchased eight 280 watt LG solar panels. I got them off Facebook Marketplace, and I paid about $75 a piece for them. All eight panels together will put out 2,240 watts of solar power. So I'll use that to charge my battery and give me up to 4,000 watts of usable battery power. So this combined with the inverter charger and the battery puts together an off-grid solar powered battery backed up solar system. To make it all portable, I attached everything to this old hand cart that we had out in the barn. You can get one that'll fit perfectly for this system at Harbor Freight for about $65. It's a 700 pound hand cart they sell there. But either way, it's easy to get all this gear in one spot so you can move it around. Connecting the components is easy with all the battery cables provided in the inverter controller box. It also includes the communication cables you need to provide communication between the controller and the battery. For your AC power input to the inverter, you need to use a regular three-prong three plug, and I would use a thicker cord than this. I would use probably a, a 12-2 or even a 10-2 if you can get it, extension cord in. This is gonna transfer up to 1800 watts at 120 volts from the grid into your inverter charge control, and that will help charge your battery from the grid when you need to. For the AC power out, I opted to put in a TT30 plug, which is a typical RV plug, because that's how I have my uh, transfer switch set up with my Honda generator. Now you can use either a power strip, like a surge protector, or you can do it in however you want. The way I did it with this is, I can plug my generator cord into my transfer switch directly from this, or if I need to use just a regular three-prong plug, I can just plug this adapter into that, and now I've got a regular output for AC. Personally, I'd recommend that if you're using an AC output from the solar inverter charge controller, that you use lighted plug-ins. That way you can just look down and see if power is coming out. And in both cases here, I, I've got a lighted plug-in. So you can get these on an extension cord or you can just buy them and make your own cord up for your AC out power. For your solar power input into your inverter, I simply just ordered a seven foot MC4 solar cable kit from Signature Solar when I ordered my inverter and my battery. They just threw that in. I think it was $18. 
and I took that seven foot cord and cut it in half, which that's what this is right here is the other half. And these, I just simply connected these to a 50 foot extension cord that has MC4 connectors on both ends to go out to my uh, solar panels. But you can set up your panels however you like. And if you get into a bigger panel array, you may want to put in uh, some, some uh, a breaker or uh, fuse protection. And now for the challenge. Can this system do the same thing as my Honda generators in providing backup power through our transfer switch to our 10 critical load circuits in our house when the power goes out? Let's find out. Now I'm just gonna go turn off the main breaker so we can replicate a power outage. All right, so I'm just gonna turn on the battery. And I think the battery has about 64% right now. So we'll just, I'm gonna turn on the inverter. All the power is off, the main breaker's off. Give that a second. Up here, we can just start bringing these circuits online. Three, four, five, six. You can hear the inverter kicking in. Shows about 500 watts on this side so far, maybe 300 on this side. That right, just went up to almost 1,000, maybe 700 watts. Sixteen hundred watts. Must be the refrigerator. Okay, so we've run, we're powering ten circuits with one battery and an EG4 three thousand watt inverter. We can look here and see. So we have sixty five percent on the battery. Load is at fourteen percent, fifteen percent. Looks like we're pulling three hundred around 375 watts. Seven amps. 65% battery power. Okay. Okay, let's go in and check, see what the house looks like. Run it off. Our solar powered battery backup. Lights are on, fans on. So great, we're running off solar power. We harvested the solar power from the solar panels, put it into the battery, and right now it's running strictly off the battery. However, we can hook up the solar panels to our system while the sun's out and gain more power to power the battery and even do that while it's power in the house. The 10 circuits that we have in our house are our critical load circuits, mainly consider of the lights and plugs in each of our bedrooms and rooms. It include on-demand propane hot water heater that has a very small amount of electricity needed. Let's go look at the load on the battery and maybe make an estimate of how long we could power the house off the battery as it stands now. So the battery's at 64% now. So it looks like we're doing 500 to 600 watts. So with 4,000 really usable watts in the battery, roughly using 600 watts an hour, we'd have between six and seven hours of power just from the, the solar battery backup system. So really, it does just as good a job for what we need as our Honda generators were doing. It's not going to require that we run out to the store to get gasoline if we need to fire it up. And we've got solar panels in order to recharge it when we need it. It also provides some dual use so we can be charging it while we're using it. All right, so the second challenge was, can we build our own DIY solar battery backup generator for less cost than we can buy one of the all-in-one battery backup solar, portable solar generators? These all-in-one generators come with the same components as this system, but they're all crammed into a smaller box to make it portable. 
That's good and bad. It makes it easier to move it around, but it's harder to get to parts to replace or work on them if something goes wrong. That, you don't have a problem like that with this system. Searching online for the most comparable all-in-one system to ours, I found the EcoFlow Delta Pro at about $3,600 and the Blue Eddy EP500 Pro, which is about $5,400. The Blue Eddy has about the same exact battery storage as ours does, while the EcoFlow Delta Pro has uh, less battery storage. As you can see here, our DIY system can be built for about $2,400 before solar panels. So the EcoFlow Delta Pro costs about 50% more, and the Blue Eddy costs about 225% more, while our system gives as good or better performance as all of those. I guess that means we can call this system the Cheapo Flow 3000. Finding new solar panels is pretty easy using Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. But if you're in an area where you can't find anything locally, try SantanSolar.com. You can order online, they carry a lot of used solar panels, and I'd recommend getting used solar panels in good condition. Try to get some that don't have any noticeable defects. Another benefit of this system is it can take twice as much solar power than any of the all-in-ones I mentioned. This system can take up to 5,000 watts of solar power or up to 500 volts, which means you can run an extremely long string of used solar panels and with the higher voltage, you don't have to run as thick a wire, which is another benefit. Building this system is not difficult, but you do need a good understanding of electrical wiring. If you're not comfortable with that, it'd be best to get somebody that, who's knowledgeable or maybe even an electrician to help you out. The voltage this system uses can seriously injure you or even kill you, so don't take any chances. I hope you found this challenge helpful. Unreliable grid power can be a serious problem, and here at Terra Hill Farm, we've experimented with several different ways to get around the problem. I'll leave some helpful links in the video description. We'd really appreciate your thumbs up and subscribing if you found this video helpful. I didn't receive any compensation for any of the items that I put in this video, and I just paid for all of it with my own money because I wanted to give you an unbiased opinion about how it works. So from Terra Hill Farm, where we truly are two steps from off-grid, we appreciate you watching this video. Check out our other videos. Thanks a lot.